Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Psycho Billy Podcast. I'm your host, Joseph, also known as Joey. Uh, before we dive into today's episode, I just want to talk about MUA for a little bit. Uh, I finally passed my science tests, so I have one more test to take, and then I can eventually go into mortuary school. So I'm very excited for that, and I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, and if you haven't noticed, I finally got my new podcast kit, so... I'm still kind of learning how this all works, but I think I got the concept of how it works, so I'm pretty excited. I also got the headset as well. I'm not using that for today's episode, but I do want to use that for future episodes. Um, And then I do want to talk about... There's a lot of topics that I do want to talk about. It's just I'm kind of very... I don't know how, how to word it. If you haven't noticed by now, I do have a speech delay, so give me a minute to think of what I have to say, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I missed out for last week because I was studying and all of that, so I'm choosing a couple of topics that I saw when it came out, and then I'm just going to discuss it today anyways. Yeah, so in the horror segment, we're going to be talking about Welcome to Dairy, the It prequel series. As well as Cinemarks announced their popcorn, screen popcorn tub restock. And then Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. But I like to call it Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Yes, you heard me, Blood and Honey. That's the way that I call it. (laughs) And then I want to talk about the Exorcist reboot. And then in the country segment, I want to talk about past female country feuds. And that also includes the latest installment of that, including Miranda Lambert. Yes, I was a part of that drama. So if you follow me on Twitter, you will see that I was putting my two cents up in there as well. Uh, Then I also want to talk about Cassie Ashton's latest single that she dropped. Ingrid Andrus drops her deluxe edition of Good Person. And is Morgan Wallen in his flop era? All that and more today coming up on Psycho Billy. Me and Bubba, my little brother, we listen to you every night. Music is my life. <laughs> Dog wheel hunt! Get that bitch! Leatherface, get that bitch! <laughs> Dog wheel hunt! Yeah. All right, starting with our first horror movie topic of the day is the Pennywise prequel series titled Welcome to Dairy, which has now been officially ordered at HBO Max. So I will be reading a an article from Bloody Discussing that will discuss more about this adaption or series, whatever you want to call it. So on the way from HBO Max is a series titled Welcome to Dairy, which will serve as a prequel to the two Stephen King movies from Andy Muchetti. And THR reports this afternoon that the prequel series has now officially been given a straight to series order. Annie Muchetti and Barbara Muchetti, who directed It and It Chapter 2, and Jason Fuchs are on board with the Pennywise prequel project from Warner Brothers. THR also notes today Annie Muchetti will direct multiple episodes of the series, including the first episode. Variety has also reported the series will begin in the 1960s in the time leading up to the events of It Part 1, the 2017 film based on Stephen King's horror novel the story is also said to include the origin story of pennywise the clown jason furch or Fuchs, who directed wonder woman and ice age continental drift and brad caleb kane who has also directed moonhaven black cells and fringe will serve as co-show runners for the prequel series they also stated that this prequel will expand the it storytelling canvas and bring fans deeper into the terrifying, mesmerizing town of Derry. Published in 1986, Stephen King's massive novel was of course first turned into a miniseries in 1990 with Tim Curry playing the role, later played by Bill Skarsgård in the movies. The tale centers on the town of Derry, Maine, where a group of friends called the Losers Club battle Pennywise the Killer Clown, first as kids and then 27 years later as adults. 
in anticipation, you can also stream their weekly Stephen King podcast, The Losers Club, who spoke to Stephen King himself about the series last year. So I am a huge Pennywise fan. My whole family is. We grew up with that shit, at least the Tim Curry version. The remake, I like it. Um, it's not the best, but it's decent. I get what it was trying to do with the whole TikTok inspiration part of the film. But I don't know. It was just cringy as fuck to me. Um, I actually rewatched the It Chapter 1 this past week. Just because of this article, it just made me want to, you know, watch it again and get prepared for this upcoming series. And every I know every film has its issues, but this film, my main issue was the CGI. That shit did not age well. I'm just going to say that. Um, with that being said, also just the whole TikTok dances that was just unnecessary i don't know why they i I get they wanted to kind of bring it to a whole new generation but i don't know it just it didn't feel right to me to add that with the whole pennywise character is what i'm trying to say but yeah let me know what y'all think about the upcoming it prequel series are you excited let me know on my instagram or twitter i'll always be reading Anyone who talks about me, I'll shout you out as well. And yeah. All right. So moving on to our next horror movie topic, we are discussing the new Exorcist reboot. So a new cast has just joined the role. You may know her, you may not. So it is Jennifer Nettles, also known. She is also known as the lead vocalist singer for Sugarland. You may know Sugarland, you may not. They are a country duo group. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm going to be reading an article from this, and this is from coming from Bloody Disgusting as well. All right, so production is back underway on David Gordon Green's The Exorcist. Variety reports today that Jennifer Nettles, the country artist behind Stuck Like You, All I Want to Do, and so forth, is the latest actor to come on board. According to this site, Nettles will play a primary role in the upcoming movie. Gordon, Gordon Green is directing the, pre, the brand new sequel to The Exorcist for Universal, Blumhouse, and Morgan Creek that will pave the way for a planned trilogy. The first film in the trilogy will be released theatrically on October 13, 2023 with Leslie Odom Jr. starring alongside Ellen Burstyn, who will be reprising her role as Chris McNeil from the original 1973 film. The first plot details we were provided with last year tease, Odom Jr. will play the father of a possessed child. Desperate for help, he tracks down Mrs. Burstyn's character. Anne Doyd, who's behind, who stars in such films as Hereditary, Lydia Jewett, who is also starring, who also stars in Netflix Night Books, and Rachel Sabarge, who's in Gaslit, and newcomer Olivia McMarkham are also on board to star in this year's sequel. The Exorcist franchise hasn't been on the big screen since the 2005 release of Dominion prequel to The Exorcist, an alternate version of the previous year's Exorcist, The Beginning. Those films came in the wake of 1977's The Exorcist 2, The Herotic, and 1990's The Exorcist 3. More recently, The Exorcist became a short-lived television series at Fox, which was surprisingly excellent and clearly took place in the same world as the original classic. So, I'm going to be honest with y'all. I, I watched The Exorcist when I was little, but I haven't watched it as I am an adult. Um, so, I definitely have to catch up on that shit as well. Uh... I want to say I watched The Exorcist the beginning because I felt like that was where I should have started. But I don't think y'all should let me know where I should start. If I should start with the original or start with the one that was called The Beginning. Um, so I'm definitely going to have to get into that, especially since my girl Jennifer Nettles is up in there. Yes. Yes, please. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty excited for that. Um, I think that's all I'm going to say for that. I Like I said, I'm not really into exorcism film i i guess in a little bit 
kind of um i would say my favorite possession movie would be like what is it uh i showed one of my best friends this film and she was creeped out from it what is it the right that's what it's called with anthony hopkins that was a pretty badass film and it gave my ass chills dead ass <laughs> um i would say that one the right if you haven't checked it out check it out i totally recommend it five star out of five star um yeah i want to say part that's about it i think yeah i don't have much to say about the actresses because i haven't really watched it in so long but definitely gonna have to be i'm definitely gonna have to catch up on that shit too before there's also a photo of her i think on film i think and um she looks bay as fuck on there that's all i gotta say all right so moving on to our next horror topic of the day uh it is going to be the screen collectible popcorn tub uh this is coming from bloody discussing as well so cinemark opens up online pre-orders for scream 6 collectible ghostface popcorn tub so if you missed your chance to grab the highly coveted scream 6 collectible ghostface popcorn tub we've got good news after instantly selling out at select Cinemark locations, the movie theater chain just opened up a pre-sale, making it easier than ever to snag one. These tubs will be available for online purchase and will be mailed out starting in August, and they won't be available in theaters. The pre-order sale closes on March 17th at midnight. Even better is that you don't have to be located in the U.S. to pre-order this sale. This sale is also open to international Scream fans as well. So grab your Ghostface popcorn tubs while you can. Um, yeah, I'm pretty. I I was debating on getting one, but also like I'm, I'm a huge Scream fan, but I don't know. I I think it was like twenty bucks. Or let me see. Sorry. I need okay, so yes, it's twenty bucks, and then they also have a Scream Six Beverage Buddies, which I think is the drinking one, and that one looks pretty dope. It's uh one, it's a two, it comes in a two pack. So one is uh, the regular ghost face and the other one is a bloody ghost face. So that's pretty dope too. Um, and yeah, I guess, so I guess it'll, the sale will end on March 17th. So make sure you grab your ghost face, beverages, popcorn tub, whatever the hell before March 17th. If not, then I guess you're tough out of luck, kid, you know? <laughs> so with that being said, I am also attending the Scream 6 3D fan event this coming thursday actually so i'm very excited um i i think the last 3d film that i saw in 3d was it's been a minute i want to say it was alien i alien covenant i had watched that with one of my homegirls that was pretty dope we watched it in imax um I, I think so far i think they're trying to bring back this 3d stuff so I know I feel like a lot of people don't like 3D, but I feel like it really makes you feel like you're in that world or it, you just feel, you know, like, um, what's the word? Uh, it just makes you feel like you're in that moment or whatever. I feel like that at least. So I like to be a part of the film when I'm watching a film. <laughs> well, with all that being said as well, uh, that will cover it for the horror segment. There's more that I want to talk about, but I will probably say that for another episode. Um, so with that being said, we're going to be moving on to the country segment. All right, so moving on to our first country topic segment, we're going to be discussing about the past female country feuds that you may or may not know of. And um, we're going to be starting off with none other than my queen, AC Musgraves versus Bobby ba Bob Bobby Bones. I was gonna say Bobby Brown. <laughs> anyway, so this article that I'm reading is from US Magazine. So in 2014, the radio personality created a segment called Is Casey Musgraves Annoyed? After he interviewed her for the Bobby Bones show during her dubbing her rude, he escalated the feud when he tweeted at her. Will Casey Musgraves ever respond to my tweets? Enter a, enter your answer now. A, yes, B, no. The, bread, the breadwinner singer fired back at the time. If you'd play our original interview in full and tell people how you unfairly re-edited it, I might think about talking to you. After Bones 
re-irritated that his two experiences with Musgraves were miserable, but they are both known shitheads, so they should be friends. She responded in a statement. I normally wouldn't take part in this kind of stuff, but since it's gotten out of hand, the original interview that audio was taken from, unfairly edited and played on air, can be found through the link on this page. I am a songwriter and a musician. That's what I've been passionate about my entire life, and it's really sad that the focus got taken away from that. Above all, I'm human, not a robot, especially at 8 a.m. I don't stroke egos and... That doesn't make me a shithead. When you hear the music that means so much to me to make, that's all that should matter. So that was back in 2014. Um, I I remember this article and yeah, it was pretty shitty. Casey Musgraves doesn't deserve that shit. Um, but I think I have heard a lot about Bobby Bobby Bones. He seems like he's very like bipolar. Um, that's just how, again, that's just my opinion i think he's and i think he has stated that he is bipolar so and i want to say he does ap apologize he probably does, hasn't said it but i want to say he does you know like he still always gives her credit and love i think he's also a huge fan of casey's music as well so moving on to the next drama feud we have miss Marin morris versus Brittany aldine so Marin morris last year had this ongoing drama with Jason Aldean's wife, Brittany Aldean. So Marin was backing up friend Cassidy Pope when she called out Jason's wife for making a transphobic comment. So this is coming from Brittany Aldean, quote, I'd really like to thank my parents for not changing my gender when I went through my tomboy phase. I love this girly life. Marin called out Brittany, insurrection Barbie. It's so easy to, not, to like not be a scumbag human, sell your clippings and zip it. Marin Morris tweeted at that time that's what she tweeted at that time i'm sorry so Brittany doubled down with the, Bar the barbie themed merch as jason declared she was my barbie that's what jason aldean had said and um marin never said anything back but marin eventually they called her like country music lunatic so K marin eventually used that towards um t-shirts and that went to the LGBTQRS Foundation. Again, on this side, I am Team Marin. Um, I'm not for the whole kids wanting to be trans, but that's just me. I think it. I think, but that's what I want to say too. Is like Brittany Aldine, that bitch. She needs to get her shit, her head out of her ass. Like, I want to. I have never seen a kid. Like, I have never seen a kid wanting to transition into another gender at such a young age. Like, if I'm being quite honest with y'all, I i am a gay man. When I was younger, I would dress up so much. I would think I was, I was a girl, all of this shit. And my parents knew about it too. And um, I don't know, they have never told me like, hey, is that what you want to be? Is this what you want to do? You know, I just kind of just went with what I what i am so i i guess what i'm trying to say is as i grew up i was like you know i'm a fucking man why the fuck do i want to be something that i'm not you know i'm mean, not that it's a issue to those who feel that way but i mean my parents have never pushed me to be something that i don't want to be and if i wanted to be a woman they would be like okay well once you're that eight of age you can do it you know so i guess that's what i'm trying to say but like i guess everyone's parent is different i guess so but I don't know. I feel like Brittany Aldean was reaching like, girl, calm your tits. That's what I'm going to say for that. But again, Team Marin over here. All right. The next drama feud that we have is Marin Morris and Kelsey Ballerini versus Morgan Wallen. So Marin Morris and Kelsey Ballerini both called out Morgan Wallen when a video of him drunkenly saying the N word surfaced back in 2021. So the news out of Nashville tonight does not represent country music. That's what Kelsey Ballerini had stated during the time. And Marin had also replied, it's actually is representative of our town because this isn't our first scuffle. And he just demolished a huge streaming record last month. Regardless, we all know it wasn't first time his first time using that word. We keep them rich and protected at all costs with no recourse. Marin added that if 
the women did the same thing as Wallen. They'd be dropped endorsement loss social pharaohs to music row. While the Sand in My Boots crooner apologized and was briefly banned from certain events and award shows, Kelsey reflected on the situation in November of 2021, telling CBS News, Standing up for anything is me crawling out of my skin, but it's something that and that's important to me. It's something that I'm trying to learn about, something that I'm a lot I'm in a lot of therapy about and something that I'm trying to do better and better and more liquidity as I get older. So um yeah, I am of course Team Marin and Kelsey as well. Um no hate to Morgan, I am a huge fan of his music, but when you say something so ignorant like the N-word, it's really it's just really so racist, you know. And yeah i'm against that shit like it should never have been said even if he was drunk but you know at the same time i get it like we all make, make mistakes so anyways all i have to say is do better that's what i'm gonna say all right so this next drama feud is none other than miranda lambert um her latest tweet that she had posted was about congrat congratulating her recent number one with morgan wallen who again, who I have mentioned, you know, he said the N-word and all of that. But she was a co-writer for a track of his way back in 2020. And the song just barely went number one. He had released it as a single, I think, in 2021. And it just went number one this past year. So I'm going to read you the tweet that Miranda had posted. And then I'm going to show you this drama that escalated that. So Miranda had tweeted... Congrats, Morgan Wallen, on your number one song, uh, You Should Know. That's what the song is called. So she said, Proud to be a writer on a song about your mama. This is the first number one song I've had as a writer. We we did good that day, y'all. Cheers, friends. Then all of a sudden, you get this lady named Ada Victoria, who I have not heard of at all but i see her post her tweet was trending and she had put yeah she had commented under the tweet she put yes queen congrats can't wait to hear what y'all rhymed with the n-word so that was very problematic if you ask me and it was very like very much clickbaity when i first saw that comment i was like are you serious so I ended up tweeting back to her and I said, not you trying to cancel Miranda. I don't agree with M Morgan's racist comment he's made, but a, if Snoop and Wiz can attend a Morgan concert, it must not be that deep. And that's not, not to say like I'm team Morgan Wallen cause I'm not, but he, I guess he has done like a lot of, what do you call it? Um, therapy or whatever and done his history whatever the hell you want to say quote unquote don't quote me but you know that's miranda was pretty much doing what any songwriter would do she was he is one of the top country male artists as of today so i mean who wouldn't want to write a song with someone who's having number ones left to write i mean even though he is a very problematic person or individual i do believe leave miranda out of this she's just doing what like i said any songwriter would do so that's what i had stated then she ends up commenting back she says i'm not trying to cancel pistol clanny i'm praising her so if you ask me again that's another problematic tweet so her band is called pistol annie's but she decided to call it pistol clanny's because she was miranda was writing she wrote a song for um <laughs> Morgan Wallen. So I ended up tweeting back to her and I said, by fueling fire and making assumptions, please, it's giving high streaming. I'm hungry and I want attention. That's what I had stated. She ends up, she ends up tweeting me again and she says, Joey, I resent that ac accusation. I really do. I would never use Twitter as a way to direct people's attention to my most recent album, A Southern Gothic Out on Canvas Back Music. Kind sir, I demand a retraction and satisfaction. So I ended up tweeting back to her, of course. And I said, I'm so dead. Somebody please give this girl a record deal. 
I also resent you for making assumptions by using the N-word with the hard R. Claiming M Miranda Lambert said what she hasn't by writing a song for a man who clearly made a mistake. We all make mistakes. Move on. She then ends up replying, Joseph, I have a record deal. I'm just here to flame white supremacists and their supporters, which I guess includes you. Anyhow, stream a Southern Gothic for clear skin and good credit. Take care of yourself, sport. So I end up tweeting back to her and i said and this includes me how so i'm a racist too even though i'm clearly hispanic this includes me just by supporting an artist i clearly enjoy by miranda lambert hanging with the one person who made a problematic statement i don't want to stream your album hun not interested one bit so with that being said when i first had interacted with her she had 19k exactly 19k followers and then suddenly she gains 600,000 no not 600,000 would it be 600,000 60,000 maybe 70,000 it just started going up so she's almost at 20k as of today um but she ended up once her she kind of like waited and calmed down she didn't reply back to me she eventually like an hour after that whole feud that that me and her were going at she ends up making this statement i am born and bred in the deep south so what i won't do is write pandering songs about boots beers and all shucks small town life it's because i love the south that i push it to finally face its demons i know the south gotta change and i believe it can i travel down to Pulaski, tennessee the birthplace of the ku klux klan from nashville during the pandemic to film this video for the south gotta change so if you're a thumb troll on here thinking you can scare me into silence you got the wrong one if you want to support my work as a southern girl kicking up shit to change the south for the better boy do i have the drip for you merch is in the link so as i stated earlier i kind of figured it was all for clickbait and trying to pretty much gain attention from someone that's someone else's success and um what else i had also made this post as well i said i made a tweet as well so i put a funny how when you start praising your tweet you use that as a tool to introduce people to who you are and what you do the victim streamy mentality of it all shaking my damn head i totally understand her being mad about morgan wallen but it's one thing to assume Miranda lambert would use that language by hanging with someone problematic she wanted to then call out trolls girl you and your fans don't scare me you got the wrong one too you also forgot you to troll to be for real because like i said she had waited for that whole thing and ended up writing this whole statement of who she is what she's about what she does you know go do your thing girl i support you whatever but don't be making assumptions about someone that is hanging out with someone problematic that's like saying if like kanye west wrote a song for Lil Uzi Vert is that gonna make Lil Uzi Vert problematic too now or is he gonna start getting hate too now because Kanye West wrote a song for him that's it's pretty stupid if you ask me that's just my take on that I hope I made it clear on what I stand by what I stand with I'm not for this whole trying to bash people because of their skin colors or any of that I don't see color at all I don't see skin at all I am just I just I can't stand people who use their skin color or stuff like that as an excuse to make people feel guilty of their own race and all that shit i just i'm not with it get with the program honey not everyone wants to be a part of this whole woke shit and i'm definitely not one of those people so if y'all are offended by what i said i'm sorry i just like to speak what i see and that's just how it comes out of it if you take it offensive i'm sorry but yes anyways we're gonna be moving on to our next drama part of this country feud shit <laughs> before i move on i just also want to say like i totally understand you know the south has got to change it needs to change there's a lot of racism i'm not going to sit here and say that that uh, white supremacist doesn't exist because it does and i know it does i mean i've been i grew up getting called so many different types of names i mean i'm like i said i'm mexican and thai and i grew up i'm also gay as well i mean i got grew up with these with people using the word faggot to me or mutt and shit like that and you don't think that offends me of course it offends me but i kind of like 
it goes through one ear and it goes through out the other i could care less um you know i guess what i'm trying to say is like i don't know i don't know how to say it. it's like um i never use that as a tool to make people like i said i i feel like i've grown to do better and not use that as an example to like yes spread the word spread your cheer whatever but i don't know anyways this is off topic but yeah like i said i hope none of y'all got offended or any of that shit and i apologize if y'all are but if y'all made it this far thank you and for hearing me out or whatever i hope you understand what i'm trying to say <laughs> all right so we're going to be closing out this last past country female feuds with none other than casey musgraves and kendall jenner so back in 2018 kendall jenner had made a post of she was wearing like a bikini and behind her was casey musgraves third studio album golden hour and kendall had blurred the whole thing out and she said heat wave with that being said i think a lot of us casey fans at the time we were all tagging her and telling telling casey like look at this look at this you know and casey saw it eventually and casey ended up sharing three photos on her instagram the first was a screenshot of jenner's instagram the next was a close-up of her blurred out face in the background the last was another screenshot of jenner's instagram however instead of leaving jenner's face clear and crisp while hers is fuzzy musgraves also blurred jenner's face giving her a taste of her own medicine the clapback was eventually deleted from musgraves instagram but that didn't stop dozen of fans from screenshotting it and praising her for her diss yeah so i remember that shit vividly um it was funny as fuck i was like yes casey do the same shit give her a taste of her own fucking medicine that's what she deserves you want to be blurring out people casey you blur her ass out too shit don't be afraid to do it either and um then kendall ended up making this whole tweet and she said yo i was working all day and didn't edit this photo casey is literally my fucking fave space cowboy i miss you keep it to yourself follow your arrow bangers ask any one of my homies i die for her and uh they eventually of course we all know they end up becoming friends now but um i don't know i just feel like like during that time is when golden hour was just released and she was claiming she knew space cowboy and all of that were in my head i was kind of like girl space cowboy just barely came out and you saying that's a fave now i don't know how true that is but eventually who cares you know they're friends now so it's all good but um yeah that's gonna do it for this whole country feud drama i know it was pretty long there's a lot to talk about in the country feud dramas but that's all i'm going to talk about those are the main topics that i chose for that but moving on we're going to be talking about cassie ashton's new single and ingrid andres's deluxe album and morgan wallen's is he in his flop era or what All right, so moving on to our next country topic, I want to talk about Cassie Ashton's latest single titled Drive You Out of My Mind. Um, this song is just phenomenal. It's beautiful. It's upbeat, but it's also sad. Um, I'm going to read you this article and then I'll share a little snippet because I don't want to get caught up or whatever band, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, but yeah, so mca nashville recording country r&b artist cassie ashton released her latest single titled drive you out of my mind today well technically last friday but as i'm reading this article you get it so the track was written by cassie ashton with travis wood and todd clark drive you out of my mind serves as the california natives next country radio single hitting the airwaves march 13th cassie has also stated when nothing else works, I hit the gas. I feel like I can breathe when the windows are down and my main character soundtrack is turned up. The so song at the top of your playlist the next time you need to get lost. Ashton is set to make her debut on the Grand Ole Opry March 15th. The widely acclaimed singer-songwriter known for her free spirit and her rich, soulful voice is also currently on the No Bad, no bad vibe, vibe Tours with Old Dominion. Um, With a little bit of rock, 
a hell lot of soul and a throwback R&B groove. MCA's Nashville's Cassie Ashton is set to take the music world by storm. And yes, I have been saying this for the longest time. I am so excited for her to blow the fuck up. She deserves it. I mean, she on whenever she does go on tour, she is constantly making her own wardrobe. She she goes to like a lot of thrift stores and makes her own customized outfits. She is just she's doing it all. Like she made her own logo throughout the tour. She 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 does everything like even her the merch that you buy at her her website she makes that shit by hand as well so it's all hand picked hand made and um i have been a huge fan of her since the beginning i saw her um even before because I, I think she started getting kind of people started hearing about her when Marin had added her on her girl world world tour and um yeah, so she's gotten, I would say Marin has definitely a big reason why she's kind of getting up there a little bit, but still Cassie is doing it her own way as well. And um, yeah, I would say definitely give my girl Cassie a huge listen. She is destined to be one of the next really huge country crossovers, I would say. Um, one of my favorite songs that a lot of people haven't heard yet, but I have I, she actually follows me on my fan account that I have of hers and um, I had told her when would you ever plan on releasing um, this song titled The Straw and she says she wants to eventually release that song when it's a part of an album because she feels it deserves to be on an album not just as a single or a track you know and if you haven't, I totally recommend you to check out Cassie Ashton, The Straw. And you'll find maybe like two or three videos of them. Click either one, but there's one of them that has the best audio quality sound. And that song is so beautiful, so it gets you chills just by her voice. And it sounds like it's your heart is breaking. That's like the best way to describe the song. And um, yeah, again, that's all I have to say of that. But I am going to share you guys a snippet and let me know what y'all think. Right, so moving on to Ingrid Andres's deluxe edition of Good Person. So before I talk about Ingrid, um, I just want to say a lot of people give her shit because she does use a lot of pop sounds, but incorporating it with country. And I guess that's very effective to some traditionalists, I guess if that's you want to call it. Um, I'm a huge fan of, of traditional country music, like George Strait, Patsy Cline, Tammy Wynette all I can name a lot but I'm not going to but I also do appreciate those who are trying to bring country music to a younger audience or a younger appeal and that's exactly what you know Casey is doing right now um Kelsey Ballerini is doing it's mainly these females that are doing it and for some odd reason they are always constantly giving angry shit so that's why I just wanted to say that but um with that being said um i feel like this new deluxe edition that she added three bonus tracks to the good person album it really completes the whole story it really does um i'm a huge fan of the whole album it just it really tells you like the whole album and chronicle order it just talks about a story of what exactly does a good person mean and if you haven't noticed as well, it is also a concept album. So if you're into concept albums, that's exactly what it is. And she tells you, she kind of takes you on this journey of, of like, if you do this, are you a bad person? If you do this, does that make you a good person? It's kind of like that, you know, I don't know if that makes sense, but anywho's, yes, I would totally recommend the deluxe edition of her album, Good Person. Um, give it a listen it's really good i'm going to share a snippet of one track that it's called wish you would which is very inspired by the 1975 with a little bit of yeehaw moments up in there so give that a listen if you love the 1975 as i love the 1975 you'll very much appreciate it and maybe you might just be like huh maybe i should give her a listen and beware she uses a lot of vocoders for this 
album specifically. Um, if you don't know what a vocoder is, it's pretty much a microphone that kind of uses auto tune, but it also kind of like makes your voice sound almost like out of this world. Um, Casey Musgraves have used it on Oh What a World. So I, I want to say definitely Casey is also a big inspiration for Ingrid as well. But um, anywho, yeah, give her a listen and I'm going to share this snippet of you for you guys. Alright, so I hope I didn't tease y'all too much because I mean that track if you weren't shaking your head or shaking your ass whatever then I don't know what it is but I was yeah you get the point anyways um yeah give her a listen uh we're gonna be talking about one last topic of the day and that's going to be Morgan Wallen's One Thing at a Time I believe his album I don't have much to say about it because I haven't listen to his album yet like i said 36 songs is just a little bit too much but i am gonna read this little article from pitchfork who is an awesome resource for albums reviews and all of that so i trust them and um yeah they gave this album a 4.1 so that says a lot exactly i mean 36 is just too much if you put out 12 songs we good man we good but 36 is just too much i don't know who has the time to listen to 36 songs but i know i don't shit <laughs> but anyways um yeah so they said modern country's prodigal son returns with the 36 song album that says a whole lot of nothing so that says a lot for me already um i do like a couple of the singles that he has released from the album but yeah i don't know um i'll give it a listen but i'll probably have to listen to it like i've said on past episodes that i will listen to it probably 12 songs one day and then listen to the next 12 songs the following day and listen to the ne the following 12 songs not the other days i'm sorry i'll listen to probably like months or some shit like that i don't know i'll have to figure it out but any who's I guess that's gonna wrap it up for this episode this episode is actually pretty long now that i'm looking at it um yeah i'm surprised i actually made it to this mark i wasn't trying to make it that long but um if y'all like it let me know uh y'all can always reach me at joey breezy underscore on instagram and at twitter um and yeah i'm just kind of i guess this microphone's kind of making me Feel more confident in myself and my voice and i hope y'all can appreciate that i am trying to do this not just for myself but for y'all that want to hear if you're a fan of core movies or country music you know this is i hope this can help you know take some air off or some steam whatever the hell and just listen to me gossip talk shit whatever um i eventually want to look for a co-host but it is kind of hard to look for a co-host um one of my best friends is here in arizona now and she had wanted to originally get on this podcast with me but i'm not sure if she's down she said she is but we'll see um i'm still looking for a co-host it's just kind of hard doing it as a solo person but yeah uh i think i do want to eventually put out another episode just to kind of make it up from missing last week's episode we'll see how that goes um but yeah, I think that'll be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much. Also, if there's any other topics that y'all want me to discuss or y'all want to hear my take on, feel free to message me or DM me, whatever. I'll be happy to discuss that and shout you out as well. I'm always about sharing and giving back. That's the type of person I am. I'm never afraid. I've never been afraid to share those type of sides of me i'm very an open-minded person um and yeah i hope y'all appreciate this episode it took me quite a lot of time to edit this and all of that so thank you and stay psycho out there y'all Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Good night. <laughs>